All right, everyone, I'm back with another project. Today's project is this Divine Mercy stained glass lighted display that I'm creating. I've been looking for uh, this Divine Mercy pattern now for quite some time. I finally found one online <clears throat> that I like, and I think this is going to work with, uh, with what I want to do here, with what I want to create. Uh, <clears throat> so anyways, what I did is, I trace this using carbon paper onto some copy paper and uh, I had to make some modifications to it and uh, I actually um, I used a ruler to get these lines nice and straight and then once I did that I scanned this with my scanner and I transferred the file to Corel Draw and I went in there and I resized it and uh, actually I flipped the image so it would be a mirror image because I needed the printed side to be on the back side of this. And I'll show you over here what I did is um, I resized it and then I taped it on here with blue painter's tape onto um, some Baltic birch plywood here. I got two pieces here, not quite a quarter inch because um, I wanted to make two two copies of because I'm going to make another maybe another light later on down the road but anyways <clears throat> how I transferred this is I used some lacquer thinner gave it a light coat so that the pattern would be transparent and then I set this whole thing aside for probably oh I'd say about two minutes then what I did is I got the spoon and I rubbed down pretty hard vigorously along all the lines that I could see here. And periodically I would lift it up to see if it transferred. And then the areas that it didn't transfer, I'd put it back down and rub a little bit more. In some spots I had to apply the lacquer thinner again and go over it. But all in all, it worked out pretty good. Came out pretty good and I'm, you know, I'm happy with that. Um, and you must have a, um, a laser printer in order to, um, do this, uh, especially if you're using the lacquer thinner. I know you can use an inkjet, but I think you have to use acetone instead of the, the lacquer thinner for it to work. But anyways, it came out pretty good. I'm happy with that. So here's what I'm going to be doing. All these cells here, I'm going to be cutting these all out, all these cells, with a Pegasus number 3 modified geometry blade. And um, I'm going to cut all these out. And uh, once I get them all cut out and everything, I'll give it a light sanding on the back side to clean it up a little bit. Then I'll be painting this with like black paint to seal it up really good. And then I'm going to use a material called gallery glass to fill in all these cells, all different colors. Um, but uh, as we go on, we'll get into that. Um, and then... Uh, but before I use the gallery glass, I'm going to have to use packaging tape on the back side to hold in the gallery glass until it dries. But um, I think the only thing that I'm, I'm really concerned about with this is doing the Jesus' face at the end. Uh, i got to come up with an idea there. So uh, we'll get to that when we get to that part. Uh, we'll go over that. But uh, anyways, so anyways, I'm going to get over to the scroll saw right now. And uh, we'll get this started, and uh, we'll see what we come up with. All right, everyone, we're over here at the scroll saw. And as you can see, I made all my pilot holes. And all these cells, these areas that I'm going to remove here, uh, it's going to take me a little while. It's probably between 80 and 85 areas that I have to remove. And as you can see, I use masking tape here to tape two pieces of, of the plywood together here. And the copy of this uh, that I'm going to make, I'll use it for another display late, later on. So with that being said, let's get cutting.
All right, I'm back. Got all these areas cut out here. All these interior cuts. There had to be at least 70 plus of them. But I got them all cut out. And it uh, doesn't look like I'm going to be needing to do any sanding like I mentioned earlier on the back. Uh, because I used that number three modified geometry blade, that Pegasus blade. Seemed like it cut pretty smooth. There's really no rough edges or anything, so I'm not going to be, a, be needing to do any sanding, doesn't look like anyway. But anyways, uh, the next step here is what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out this line here all the way around, cut this window out. And I'll have two separate pieces, because as I mentioned, I stack cut this. Uh, two pieces of not quite quarter inch Baltic birch. And... Uh, this way I'll have a copy for another light down the road if I decide to make another one. Um, and then this outer edge here, as you can see here, I'm going to use this as my template for the actual casing of the display light that I'm making for this. But anyways, I'm going to get bring this over the scroll saw right now. I'm going to cut this out here. And, and then afterwards, after I cut this out, <clears throat> I'm going to be spray painting one of these black um, and the purpose for spraying it black um, not only for the color but also also for sealing it because the product that I'm going to use it's called gallery glass um, it's water base and uh, I'm not going to want it to uh, soak into the wood because what will end up happening happening it'll end up warping this window and I don't want that to happen so um, but anyways, we'll get into that as we uh, go along in this video. But right now, I want to bring this over to the scroll saw. We'll get this cut out. And uh, then I'll explain more about the next step. Okay, so with that being said, let's get going. All right, I'm back. Got these cut out. As you can see, after stack cutting, I got two identical panels. One of them I'm going to use for another project down the road. And then the other one is going to be used for the light display. But before I talk about this, what I did is I got this panel and I centered it on this board, which is 9 by 19 and fits out perfect for this light display. And I traced, it's hard to explain here, but what I did is I traced the outside of it, and then I traced the inside of it. And I also traced all these cells, inside cells, because this piece of, pro, this piece of wood here, after I cut it out, becomes scrap. So rather than it being scrap, I'm going to use it for a hand-carved project later on. So what I did is, after I traced this on there, I also made another border on the outside here, about an eighth of an inch all the way around. Because after this gets cut out, there's going to be two frames that are going to be cutting out. And I'm going to be using a process called Antofret. And it's a process that was developed by an Italian priest back in the early 1900s. And what it is, is it involves tipping the scroll saw table a certain amount of degrees. And depending on whether you go clockwise or counterclockwise will determine whether that piece of wood that you cut out is going to lock pushing it in or lock pushing it from behind to the front. And in this case, this first frame, I'm going to want it to lock pushing it in. And then the outside frame, I'm going to want it lock from pushing it from the back to the front. And I'm going to want it to come out about a half an inch. 
So with three quarter inch pine and a half an inch, that gives me an inch and a quarter. And that's going to be enough room to house, uh, to put in my LED lighting, to put this panel on the front of it when it's completed, a backer board, and a stand that's made up of um, select pine, two feet. But we'll go in, we'll get into that later on when we get to this, this part of the project. But for right now, I'm going to get this painted right here. And we're going to paint it with this Rust-Oleum Satin Plaque. Both sides, seal it up really good. Covers real well. I can get this at Walmart, Lowe's, Home Depot. Then, once this is painted, I'm going to be covering the back side of this, overlapping it with packaging tape. And the purpose of that is it's going to hold in the gallery glass. Uh, it, it's going to hold it in long enough for it to dry and get hard. And then later on, I'll be able to peel it off. But I'll show you more about that when we get to it. But anyway, with that being said, let's get this panel painted and get on with this project. Okay, everyone, I'm back. I got the panel painted black. I applied the packaging tape on the back to seal it so that my material doesn't run through it. And uh, the other thing I'm going to do next is, uh, before I use the gallery glass, is uh, I'm going to use this clear glue. And the purpose for the clear glue, Elmer's glue, is it's going to seal in all the bottom spots here of each one of these cells and it's going to help keep the gallery glass and the different colors from bleeding into each other. And the other purpose of it is too, it's going to fill in these cells a little bit. So I'm not going to be wasting my gallery glass because the Elmer's glue is a little bit, is much cheaper than the gallery glass. So it's a way of, you know, stretching your material, um, a little cost effective using this. So the other thing is, too, is I'm going to be adding a drop of, uh, I got some clear dish soap in here. And what I found out is that it helps soften this after it dries so it doesn't crack. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get started first. I got to fill all these cells with this Elmer's glue. So I'm going to get started on them. I'm not going to bore you with showing you every cell that I'm going to fill here, but I'm going to fill a few of them and show you how, how I do it and move it around with the toothpick. this all filled in with the glue and uh, one thing I wanted to point out is uh, when I told you I filled in these first few areas and I noticed there was a texture effect uh, using the dish soap along with the glue well after I got done doing all this um, I noticed that this panel needed more glue uh, for support purposes and just to fill this in a little bit more on all these cells and uh, after it dried, I waited about maybe 48 hours, I noticed that all these cells, um, that texture effect went away. And then I went from the back side to feel to see if it was uh, if it was hard or soft or whatever. And they all seemed the same, even in the areas where I didn't use the, the dish soap along with the glue. So I'm, rather than redo this portion of the video, um, I'm going to tell you here up front, I uh, may not need to use that dish soap with the with the glue. Um, that's up to you. Uh, I'm seeing now that it really isn't making that much of a difference, so you um, may not need to use it if you do decide to do this, okay? So anyways, getting back to uh, the next step here. I got my pattern here, and what I did is I went around and color-coded 
all these cells. I mapped out my coloring. So this way, when I go on to add my material, the gallery glass to this panel, I won't make any mistakes. So right now, um, I'm going to get the gallery glass together and uh, we'll get going on um, adding the color to this, uh, this panel. Be right back. All right, I'm back everyone. I got all my gallery glass together here. And uh, I got a variety of colors. Uh, I'll go over them with you. I got this one here, the, it's called Sunny Yellow. I got Royal Blue. Um, this one here is Ruby Red. And let me see what else here. We got uh, Snow White. Um, amber, uh, shimmering uh, red, um, and also got uh, a cocoa brown that I'm going to be mixing with the white to do a little bit of the skin coloring. Um, and then uh, we got the snow white. So I uh, got a variety of colors here that I'm going to use. And uh, so, like I said, here's the pattern. I got it all color coded. I know just where I'm going to be putting my coloring. So, right now, we'll get started on this. I'll start filling. I'll show you how I do it. I'll do a few of these cells. And then uh, I'll come back later and show you what the end result looks like. So, we'll get started. Right now, I'm going to start with the royal blue and this one here this is an older bottle so I'm going to use this up you don't want to shake this material uh, because uh, you'll create a lot of bubbles and that you don't want to get any bubbles when you're applying this and if you do um, you just uh, get your I, I always use I use a toothpick when I spread this out and uh, just Move it back and forth and the bubbles should come out. So right now we'll start applying the blue. Like I said this is an older bottle. So, we get some in here, pretty good amount. Then I'll get the toothpick, start spreading it. I want to get all the areas good around the edges. You don't really have to use a lot of this because after using the glue for the base, these cells are pretty thick. So, but you want to make sure you get it all spread it out, spread out pretty evenly. And after this dries, if you notice some areas that you didn't cover, you can go back over. It takes probably about 12 hours for this to dry pretty good. Just want to make sure that you get it all inside the these areas here on the sides. You get it filled up pretty good. Check for bubbles. If you see any bubbles, kind of get the toothpick and work it back and forth on the bubble so you can get rid of it. So there's one. Now we're going to go on to the other color, which is a light diamond blue. This one will probably come out a little bit easier because it's a new bottle of the material. So you want to get enough in there. 
See how nice it comes out? And then get yourself a toothpick, like I said. And then just spread it around. Nice and even. Get it really, uh, make sure you get it up real close. To the edges so it gets covered now I'm looking back on the first one that I did I'm gonna need a little bit more material here it's really important that you get all these sides here right up nice and close because I'm looking down on it and I can see light through it on the edges So anyway, just to give you an idea, I'm not going to do all these. I'm not going to show you every one of these that, I, that I'm going to do. It's going to take a while for me to do this. But just so that you got an idea of what I'm doing here. So there we go. And then once this dries, this will dry probably a little bit of a different color. This will dry a little bit darker. And it'll be uh, more, tr it'll be transparent. So anyways, you get an idea of what I'm doing here. So I'm going to go ahead and finish the rest of this here. And then uh, we'll come back and we'll take a look to see how it all worked out for, for me here. So I'll be right back. All right, everyone, I'm back. I got this panel all filled in. I know in that last segment. I kind of struggled a little bit with that one color with that old older bottle of gallery glass so i had to scrap that it was taking me too long but uh all in all it didn't take me too too long to get this filled in i had to go back over it in a couple spots and uh and what i did is i held it up to the light to see if there was any light coming through it that wasn't caught where the material didn't fill and uh I had to go over a few spots on on the edges here, but it wasn't too bad. Still haven't figured out what I was going to do for the what I'm going to do for the face set, but I'll, I will come back and uh, complete that. Uh, as far as the detail work goes, I used some red gallery glass for the wounds of the hands and the feet. They seemed to seem to work out pretty good, as you can see, and on the hands there. It seemed to work out. And also I was going to use uh, the Snow White for Jesus' robe. And I have this other material, material gallery glass. It's called White Pearl. And that really gave it a real nice effect as you can see it. Really looks like the material of his robe there. So I really like the way that works worked out there. I had to blend some colors up here for the to make it kind of a goldish here. With the white. Or with the... Uh, with the yellow, I'm sorry. And uh, that worked out great. So anyways, we got this done. So now we got to get over to the scroll saw and get the main part of this light cut out. Uh, what I talked about in the first part of this video. So we'll get over to scroll saw, get that cut out. And we'll see how this panel fits in. I got this centerpiece cut out that we talked about. That I'm going to use for another project. I traced the pattern on here. And uh, this is going to be a router project down the road. So I'm going to put this aside for now. This piece here, this is going to be the main body of the display light. I brought this out in the garage and put it on the router table and gave it a round over edge. Give it a nice look. Now what I did is, uh, what I have to do here is, I drilled a, an entry hole here, and I'm going to be cutting out the center ring, tilting the table two degrees to the left, and I'm going to be going clockwise. And after I get this first ring cut out, this is going to lock pushing it down. But I'm going to probably, it's going to probably lock maybe 
an eighth of an inch. And then this outside ring, I'm going to drill a pilot hole here after. And then I'm going to go counterclockwise. And when that's cut out, I'm going to try to push that out about a, maybe about a half an inch along with this inside ring. And that's going to give me enough room, a cavity inside this, to display my LED lighting, putting it on my backer board, uh, putting in the stained glass panel on the front, and putting um, a stand on the bottom here. Because I'm going to have this standing up. So, with that being said, I'm going to get cutting on this and I'll be right back. the main body of this light fixture cut out and as you can see there's three parts to it and as I mentioned these all fit in together they lock this ring here locks in from the back to the and it's pushed out from the back to the front as you can see and then the center one goes in and it locks from the front, pushing it to the back, like so. And then the stained glass panel will go on the top here. So this is what I'm going to do next. Okay, we're going to move right along in this video. I'm going to take this apart. I'm going to stain this, this color here. It's a Zara stain. The color is teak natural. Once that dries, I'm going to give it about three coats, three to four coats of this clear gloss. And when, once that's all set, oh, and also I'm going to make, I'm going to make a stand out of the pine. So this stands up when I display it. And that's also going to be stained and and also finished off with uh, the clear gloss here. You can buy these at uh, Home Depot, Lowe's, Walmart. I think the Zara you can get this at uh, Lowe's. But anyways, once this is all finished, what I'm going to do is i got to get a thin piece of plywood for the backing that's going to cover this. And I think I'm going to attach some aluminum foil to the back piece so it reflects the LED lighting. And then what I'm going to do is, here's the LED lighting I, I have. Actually, it was from a TV. I bought it for the TV set to illuminate the back of it. It just kept falling off, so I'm going to use it for this light fixture. It also comes with a remote control. So I'm going to fasten it to the plywood, and I'm going to fasten to the back of this. And see how that works out. And then I think what I'm going to do is when I put that stained glass panel on the front of this, I'm going to use some hot glue to glue it in. I'm not going to glue it permanently just in case I need to take it off in the future to make any type of repairs or whatever. So that's how I'm going to go about it. But anyways, so like I said, um, I'm going to move right along on this video now. So um, when I come back, I'll, I'll recap on what I did. and. Um, and uh, we'll see how it works out. So with that being said, sit back and watch the rest of this video.
I completed this Divine Mercy LED light display. Right now I got it lit up. There's a lot of different functions, different settings, but I like this one the best. It shows up pretty good. A um, couple things I want to point out. I was able to draw the face of Jesus. My first attempt wasn't good, so I had to cut it all out and redo it again. That was not fun. It took me a long time to, to redo that. Uh, the other thing is I want to point out is I mentioned is the... The liquid dish soap with the glue, uh, I don't think it's necessary. Um, it may help a little bit, but I didn't see anything really that really stood out that um, warrants it uh, to be included um, with this project. The other thing is, I know I mentioned I was going to use the hot glue gun to, to fasten this panel in, just in case I had to work on it later on. I decided to use the wood glue and put it in there permanently. If I need to work on it, I can work on it by taking the back off. You know, I can work on it from both sides. So I don't think that's going to, you know, that's going to be an issue. Also, I didn't include in the video making these uh, two pieces here for the stand. They're made of uh, pine, um, three-quarter inch pine wood. So... Just wanted to point that out. But all in all, uh, it really came out good. Um, gave it uh, about three coats of clear after I stained it. Had to make some, uh, reduce a couple areas on it that uh, didn't cover well around some of the edges. But uh, it really, really, I'm really happy um, that I was able to uh, do this project. It took me quite a while to do it, at least a month and a half. But it was well worth it. I really like it. Lights up nice. The foil that I use inside to illuminate the LED lighting seems like it's working out pretty good. So that's about it. Um, like I said, I'm really happy with it. And uh, the other thing, the message, the Divine Mercy. I highly recommend you check out the Divine Mercy Chaplet. Great prayer. Great history behind this image. So I, I highly recommend you check it out. So if you like my video, hit the like button. Um, if you have any questions or comments, uh, leave them in the comment area. I'll get back to you, you know, and answer them the best, you know, the best I can. Uh, I will leave uh, a link to the Divine Mercy Shrine in Stockbridge, Massachusetts, if you're interested. So, with that being said, I want to thank you all for watching this video. And uh, until next time, until my next project, I'll see you then. Bye now.